Okay, I think we're gonna call the meeting to order. We have all different clocks with all different times. So um, I'm just gonna we'll assume it's 1.30. And Jory, if you could do a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the meeting of the policy committee for August 12th. And Jory, if you could do roll call. Kamaji. Yes. Hines. Here. Lee. Here. Topper. Here. And are there any changes to the minutes from our meeting on July 10th? Nope. Okay, seeing none, we'll say they're approved. And we'll jump into residents forum. Do we have any speakers? Let's do. So residents have up to two minutes to address the committee. The committee does not directly answer questions posed by speakers during the residents forum, but it does hear the viewpoints and ideas presented and members do consider them as they ask during the meeting. Speakers must conduct themselves with proper decorum consistent with community standards that would not be offensive to a reasonable person as determined at the sole discretion of the GRF board. Participants may not engage in personal attacks, threats of any kind, or any other disrupt disruptive behavior. Speakers violating these rules may be expelled from the meeting and precluded from speaking at future meetings as determined by the board. All right, our first speaker is Susan Hildreth. <laughs> Okay, speakers, please remember to state your name and your address. Uh, Susan Hildreth, 2229 Ptarmigan uh, Drive, number one. <clears throat> I'm here today representing the Democrats of Rossmore. <clears throat> Excuse me, one of the largest clubs here in Rossmore. We passed a resolution in July in opposition to the proposed non-resident club member fee. Um, Clubs have a required limit of 20% non-resident members. The Dems of Rossmore only has 13.6 non-resident <laughs> club members out of uh, 1,100. We report this to GRF Securitas. We've never exceeded the 20% limit. We think the fee would be a disincentive for non-residents to join Rossmore clubs. They would be able to continue to participate, participate in our programs as guests of residents. Clubs would lose valuable members and revenue. I don't think GRF would gain revenue and interested community members would still come to programs. It's not clear how the fee would be levied or managed. And I think the implement implementation of that policy would turn Rossmore into a silo. Rossmore and its clubs are strengthened by, strengthened by opening our doors and membership to residents of Walnut Creek and neighboring communities. We also are concerned about the required meeting request submittal of 30 days before an event. Often the Democrats of Rossmore have the opportunity to bring high profile speakers to Rossmore who are a benefit to the community, but we have very little notice. We request that you modify that timeline to two weeks before an event. Thank you. Next we have Mindy Zuckerman. <clears throat> Zuckerman, 1908 Golden Rain Road, number two. Uh, this is in regard to club room reservations. This new team wants everything to be fair and equitable. The same for everyone. Well, this would be fine if the needs of each club were the same. However, a performance group does not have the same needs as a discussion group that meets once a week or once a month. Therefore, what is fair is not equitable and what is equitable is not necessarily fair as space requirements for each club varies. If we all took a test and with the same test and we're all given the same uh, and scored highs and lows and we're all given the same score, that would be equitable, but it wouldn't be fair. So a plan, if it's flawed from the very start, is not a good plan. Yes, there are bad actors, but it seems that we are all being punished for their actions. We are being treated as if we were delinquent eight-year-olds who have been defacing school property. We've provided input and do not see any place where, there, where we have been heard, where there is compromise for other needs to be met. Nothing about then we'll see, or it just seems to be my way or the highway. You remind us that GRF is running a business, and my, may I remind you that we are your customers and we are not being treated well. We need some flexibility from the team, we need some willingness to compromise on some of these rules. Not all clubs are the same, and we all have different needs that need to be recognized. Fair is not always equal, and equal is not always fair. Thank you. Let's 
Next, we have Art Salzfest. <laughs> Hi, my name is Art Solzfest. I'm at 3288 Terra Granada in Rossmore. Uh, I can see that a lot of good work is being done. I'm a member of the ukulele club. I defer to my ukulele friends. I'm concerned that a lot of paperwork is being required. I'm concerned about too much bureaucracy. I have an immediate need about free rooms because they affect me personally. I have set up a couple of small ukulele groups in the Pine Room and the Echo Room and we're being kicked out. I don't understand the thing about free, but I'm sure you guys know what you're doing. And I have a suggestion that if you let those be self-regulated so that I could look at a list of all the rooms that are free and if you're going to keep it open i can just press a button and reserve that room a week and ahead without talking to somebody and maybe that might make things simpler thank you okay next we have farhad hi toby Far toby Yeah, my name is Farhad Kartobi, and I've been living in Rossmore for 23 years. And my address is 1149 Sky Crest. I spoke last time about room reservation, but I think Mindy covered that. I, as I was walk, walking here, I passed through art studios and other studios in, in the other side. And I noticed that all of them have dedicated rooms. And our studio has two rooms, and basically nobody is ever there. And my question is this: uh, Are these kind of clubs, like art club or ping pong club or swing club, are they being managed by the recreation department or not? And if if they are, then if they are not, then who is managing them? Uh, I'd like to talk about two points that came. Uh, commanding points that came to us as the uh, guest lists. I read them for you. A guest list must be provided to the recreation manager for review at least seven days prior to the event. Are you kidding? Is, I think you're living in Rossmore. I mean, you think you can follow this policy? Good luck. All guests must be identified by name and either a mobile phone number or email address. Again, are you kidding? Rossmore does not work like this. Then somebody has to review this. Somebody has to call the security, give them all the names. Okay, computer, you use the computers. But you, may, you create level, levels of responsibilities for simple tasks. That forever and ever in Rossmore, none seconds. of this has to be had to be done. Thank you. Okay, now we have Joyce Capuche. 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 Uh, Joyce Capuche, two one zero one Golden Rain Road, number seven, entry fourteen. <clears throat> Clubs are the heart of Rossmore. No matter what your interest may be, there is probably a club in Rossmore that fits. Fits your need. Changes are being made quickly without regard to the various club size and how they operate. I've had my club, the Becker Society, for over 20 years. It was never meant to be a large club and will never ever be a large club. Some of the rules being set now are not conducive to all clubs. For example, they want payment for room set up 30 days in advance. I have no idea 30 days out how many people will attend a given meeting or what set my setup would be. We had an event on July 31st in the Diablo room at Hillside, which was booked last year. I confirmed the room reservations with room reservations that all was in order. They confirmed back to me that yes, it was uh, confirmed. I paid my check as I always do and got a notice back that we still owed more money on the room. The rate was increased 150% from 
without any notification prior to the event. I attended the Reservations Roadshow on Monday afternoon, July 29th. We were all given packets of information. The Reservation Conditions and Guidelines, a 10-page document, describes a number of conditions, payments, schedules, alcoholic beverages, rental conditions, services, insurance, deposits, required for cleanup, et cetera. 20 seconds. There are numerous questions regarding these rules, and I think they should be looked at. Next, we have Marilyn Beardsley. Marilyn Beardsley, 1289, Avenida Sevilla 2B. I'm representing the Hawaii State Club. So I believe the audit was a very wise decision and the results were eye-opening and probably long overdue. But I can understand the changes that you're wanting to make on a very high level. However, for all the changes, they are not all um, reasonable based on our club's resources and our needs. These changes seem to be premature since they've not been previously um, having a dialogue between the clubs and room reservations. And I think that's a flaw right there. We need to have the discussion before we make policy changes to make it hardcore. Anyway, um, we're all volunteers and we don't get paid and we're very limited on our resources, people-wise and money-wise. So I gotta tell you, some of these changes are burdensome and it discourages our volunteers and it will further complicate the type of successful event that we end up having. So our club needs are very simple. We follow the rules. We have less than 6% that are non-residents. And I understand you talked to some of the people that were um, problematic, but I recommend talking to other clubs, the ones that have different needs and different requirements. Learn about them and what they need and get input and maybe some feedback that might be applicable to make it more um, equal and you know, equitable <laughs> before the changes seconds. are hindered. Well, I just want to tell you about one thing. We have an event in September and we were told um, the rec department would take care of it. This is the letter I got. After thorough consideration available um, available options, we are unable to relocate your September event and policy now is canceled and reservations deemed unnecessary. There was no, no uh, conversation at all. It's just, you are out of luck. You don't have the room. And we're making changes to, for you to help you, but I'm not seeing a uh, reciprocal at all. And I, I'm very sad about that. Thank you. Now we have Dave Costers. Hi, I'm Dave Coster, out of the 3352 Terra Granada, number 1B. And I'm convinced that the changes that are underway here are going to be in everybody's best interest. I think it's a healthy process, and I think the process will overall benefit Golden Rain staff. They've got capacity issues right now. I think it's going to benefit the clubs, and I think it's going to benefit individual members. The only request I have is that uh, we, we identified uh, issues previously. The roadshow has occurred, and uh, I think uh, that's a good conversation. It's a good step in terms of clarifying some things. But that roadshow, by, by its nature, identified additional questions, additional concerns, potential problems. And so my request would be that the board and this policy committee, before you press the approved button on this new policy, be sure that the, uh, there's been the necessary essential vetting of the issues and looking at that carefully before pressing that approved button. Thank you. Now we have Phil Prasic. Good 
Good afternoon. On Phil Precinct, 2625 Tarmian, number five. I'm the president of the Sunday Dancers Club, also the treasurer of the Penguin Dance Club, a former vice president of the Ballroom Dance Club, and a current member or participant in three other dance clubs. I'd like to first commend Ann Matola and her community services organization for the hard work of improving room reservations processes with the goal of making facilities reservations more equitable for the clubs and for the recent meetings to explain the processes to the various clubs. Job well done so far. I understand the need for certain fees to be charged to help pay for additional people to implement these changes. I'm very hopeful that community services and this policy committee want to have well-constructed policies. There is still room for improvement in the proposed policy changes relevant to today's agenda. Please add definitions of terms in the revised policies. Going forward, this helps minimize getting varying interpretations and implementations of policies. An excellent example of doing it right is GRF policy 103.1 entry into Roston work, section two. Next is that proposed policy changes allow for potentially inequitable duplicate fees being charged for an event with non-residents attending. I recommend eliminating any flat facility rental fees for clubs and charging only a small impact fee for non-resident attending. This will keep the clubs, clubs pay in proportion to the impact non-resident attendees have at their events. Well, a flat private rental fee is very likely to inequitably impact a number of clubs. There is an old adage that goes, a verbal statement is not worth the paper it's written on. Consequently, I have a much higher level of respect for well-constructed policies. I'm hopeful that many here today do likewise. Thank you. That was our last speaker. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, I don't have a cherished report. Uh, we'll move into item six, unfinished business, and discuss the facilities use uh, policies. So, Anne, did you want to give us a little summary? Yeah, I mean, so last at the last meeting, we kind of, well, it was a bit of a precursor because we were going to go into the road show. Um, but what we wanted to do is to present like why we got here and so what led to the need for the um, policy changes. And so um, just, you know, that was presented as part of the presentations we did with the Reservations Roadshow because we wanted to let them see what was being discussed here. Um, and again, a lot of what we're doing is having conversation. This is part of the dialogue and the engagement process. So we really appreciate the continual engagement. I will say the different dance groups have been particularly vocal and I think represent a lot of the interests of a lot of the community. So, um, you know, again, this is all part of the conversation. And so, and Jeff and I talked a little bit about this because this is a lot of information to take in. So as far as how to go about this, I don't know if we should go sequentially or start with some of the bigger decisions in the room, but I would um, defer to the chair on that unless Jeff has some ideas. Go ahead. Yeah, because there's something I we're talking about three different policies, and I think the first one's easy to get to get through, but then the other ones have a lot of things which will impact how we go to the board with fees. Well, which one do you think should be first? So I, I think you you do want to kind of go through this step by step, and what we are ultimately looking for is is some of that guidance on bigger issues such as the impact of non-residents, gate security, um, how you want to spread fees and impacts to all residents that uh, end up paying for these impacts and, and, and services uh, compared to the individual groups or, or clubs that are, are receiving the benefit. So there's kind of a, a number of umbrella type uh, issues that I think we need to address. Uh, but the best is probably just to start at, at the top and go through the, the changes in the, the proposed policies uh, one by one, and then we can uh, expand on those as, as we get through it. I agree. Um, committee members, any thoughts on that? No, sounds good. So 
does that mean you want to start with 302 or did you want to jump to 304 which has the poll? I think it would be helpful to start with 304. This is probably what most of the people are interested in too because mm -hmm. we're going to get into more of the meat of the potential changes. Right. Okay, so first I want to just tell the residents here like if you missed the presentation that Ann gave at our last month's meeting, it's available online. It was an excellent presentation and it may clear up some of your concerns if you haven't been following this issue uh, along the past couple of weeks. Um, as far as doing, going through policy 304, again, I'm new to the policy committee, but I would suggest going through line by line. Yes. Okay, and we're we going to work off the red line just so we're all. I would work off the red line. Red line. Yeah. Red line. Okay. Okay. And if anybody's yeah, interested, the, the red line, the original policy, the red line policy, and the clean copy with the red line edits is available online also. Um, <clears throat> off the top, I would just recommend globally that you decide what you're going to call clubs. You have different terms, GRF approved organizations, GRF recognized organizations, you call them clubs. So I would pick the term and use that consistently in all three of the. the and also the only issue, there's a club and a GRF approved organization are not necessarily the same That's thing. right. Okay. So maybe so we do a definition somewhere. Maybe we do, yeah. But sure. just come on two terms because you're saying there's three in there. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and then also just an editing pet peeve. Uh, consistently when you use a number, um, Thanks, we Corey. should have the number spelled out and then in parens put the numerical. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then um, this is going to be complicated, but I think as we go through this, we need to align whatever's in the policy with the guidelines that were handed out during the roadshow. Right. The, the guidelines yeah. of the roadshow, that document is, to me, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it's really a very good document. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll get to it, though, because it seems like I mean, there are certain things in here. I don't know if you would. Yeah, the subjects like, will come up. Like decorations. So, stuff I don't you know don't. if it belongs in a policy. No. Okay. Yeah. But we can hit that when we get there. Um, but as of, for instance, the, the guidelines talk about deposits, required insurance, mm -hmm. alcohol policy. Do those need to be in a policy? Or is, and then my other question is the alcohol policy for GRF, is that somewhere else yeah, where we could that? reference? So this is in relation mainly to what the alcohol beverage control uh, requirements yeah. are, and it's, it's somewhat outside of the control of GRF. So but I think that's why you don't necessarily want the specifics, you want to state that it will be in compliance with yeah. those. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any global changes? All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, well, I, I have a clarific clarification okay. question to ask. So if we're starting with 304, because we started looking at this, and I believe Maxine was not here for the first review. And so this includes something in here, which is different in the policy. So when we were talking about the order, we had, um, it said we're, we want to do the priorities for the religious observance. Right. And then there was a request to do cultural holiday. And my concern is that's very broad and we would really need to define that. I think we do. Because there was a reason and there's, it's kind of a common practice to do accommodations for religious observance where cultural can get very, um, contentious because there's lots of holidays which are not celebrated on the actual date, but it can move to the next weekend or something. Mm -hmm. Religious observance. One month. Yeah, or within a month. Yeah, where religious observance tends to be very date specific. So that it would. So that type of clarification would help us because as it as it is written right now, we're going to have a lot of activities come to try to find a lot of those things. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, before we get that was 
related to 4A. Now, before we get to that, oh, and I would just, in that first paragraph, the last line, it says, must be supervised. And I would say, insert buyer resident. Oh. Oh, yes. Where is that? That's the last line where it says children must be supervised. First paragraph. Yeah. First paragraph. Facility use. Yes. Then in the next <clears throat> section, reservations, number three is really the premise. So I would make number three number one. Okay. No, yeah. No, I'm sorry, I lost you. What are you? So Those become first come, first serve. Okay. Although, and, and I will say some of the, um, so it happens with mutuals. So the mutuals, the priorities are we need to make sure that they have them for the business, the legally required business. And then some of your socials are actually history dates. So we do actually, mm -hmm. we'll send them information to make sure if they want to roll over the dates, we can give them the dates for oh, their so socials. So it rolls into their history. Yeah. Okay. But then anything else, if they just wanted to come and have like some, like you create some subcommittee, but it's not legal required. Again, that's first come, first serve. Okay. 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 Anything on the first page? Yeah, I have a Same. question on number four. Um, well, I have a question throughout a little bit about how really can some of these things be monitored, such as um, members, Remember, are responsible for actions of their guests. That's cool. It must be in attendance with their guests during the use of Golden Rain facilities, blah, 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 blah. Can somebody explain to me how actually we can actually monitor that? And if we cannot monitor that, does that need to be in a policy? Um, also, as long as we're talking about the whole first page, on number four, it says, um, reservations may be made by GRF or beginning the last week of August. I believe I read in the roadshow material, it said August 31st. Mm -hmm. So I think that should also be clarified. Um, the so date will change year on year, but it will change. But it'll always be the last week of August. Oh, okay. we'll so then it shouldn't yeah. be that yeah. way in the other. Yeah, the other. wanted to stand the test of time. Okay. You want to be consistent, okay. though. You're so right. This year it's August 31st, mm -hmm. is what you're saying. <clears throat> okay, got it. Um, okay. All right. I think that was my main, main question. Okay. Going to page two. On number four C at the top, there's just a spelling error. Availability of room. <laughs> room. Ah. No. Actually, I'm actually. <laughs> okay, and number five. Uh, you throw in the word lessees. Um, do we want to clarify that? Lessees of private right. reservation since that's yeah, the so first I, occurrence. What I may end up doing is steal the language for the sake of this, because even in the application, that's what we were, any user of the room is called a lessee. So I think it's part of that getting the right, getting consistency in how we refer to the different parties. So you'll, if you will, yeah, so I'll take a, I'll go through it <laughs> after you do the initial things. I'll go through it and make some changes. So since this is a standalone policy, um, would, would you put a little definition in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <clears throat> and then at the end of that first line on number five, you say, it says a maximum of six months in advance but a full year would be covered in the history reservations, correct? 
Yeah, so this is, this is actually for, clubs are accepted from this because clubs do get the year in advance, the, H, the HOA legal stuff, they all get the year in advance. So this is again, so this was existing language. We actually clarified it in the roadshow document. So I can look at that and make it. Okay. You put the roadshow document language here, it's yeah. better. Yeah, it's, it's a little awkward. Okay. I'm again questioning really about enforcement. For this one? This is easy. Yeah. If somebody comes to us for their for Oh, date. no, 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 the next, I'm on the oh. next one. Okay. Oh. Um, it looks like 6A, <laughs> okay. but she was done with that. What number are you on? Six. Six. Oh, A is part of the sentence. Okay, oh. six. I, I really would like some clarification of enforcement. So what's so what I can tell you right now is we have a lot of complaints for a lot of the things that we're trying to clarify, which are not the intended use. Right. And so a lot of it is managing the flow of the day of the staff that are there to manage the reservations and even um, inspections, if you will. Yeah. So there's there will be something that's put together and it will be an internal document so we can go and kind of audit to make sure that the, the rooms are being used the way people are using them. Okay. And I will say that there's like for most people, for most of the clubs or organizations, it's fine, but we do, we do have people coming to us telling us, hey, we want to keep an eye on this or that. And so I think what's happening is it's, you know, I, I think because there's been such a demand for rooms and people can't get them, or we've been seeing people or they or peers have been seeing their peers swap rooms. That's it gives good. us the ability when we put it in writing just to make sure people know. And I think I was mentioning this in the workshop that when this happens and people are like, oh, it's okay, I can just do this. It's taking that resource from a neighbor. And if you look at it, like we're all kind of sharing this, that, you know, we have a certain schedule that we'll be putting together for certain team members to, you know, go and check around at different reservations. Is there anything in here about the possibility of last minute um, or within a week, last minute um, options for room rental? You mean, can somebody come in? Yeah, because the, the there are time. times when- Yeah, I think, I think what's gonna happen is once we kind of get this process- shh, so, shh. Everybody has to, in the room yeah. has to remain quiet, please. Once we get the process squared away, and again, a lot of the intake that we're getting really helps manage the administrative work that has to be done for every reservation. So right now they're in a scramble because they're getting a lot of setups the week of, and it's it's yeah, constant frenzy. Yeah. So so what happens is that time where you would think, oh, these reservations that are booked a year in advance are all kind of set. We're still doing work on them that time when we should be able to be taking yes, walk up, somebody that's looking at a room within a week in advance. Theoretically, when you get the work organized, structured and managed, um, it'll free up that time. So we can be a bit more responsive to the last minute needs of the clubs. Like somebody that needs a last minute room for like a, a, a extra board meeting or something like that. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. So we're it seeing that goal. happen in the future. Yeah, we're working toward that. And to speak to that, I think, when we get through these, it's going to take a couple of renditions. But when we get through it, we have a cleanish copy. That's okay. I'm I think we walk through it for each of these different conditions to see if the policy works for those conditions. Yeah. yeah. So agreed. That's, that's a good point. A lot of it's going to depend on the type of rental too that you're last minute yeah. wanting to come in. Right. If you're wanting to come in, I need I having a meeting. Happen. I need a boardroom, or I or I have. That's one thing. If you come in one weekend ahead and say, we want to conduct a, a performance and we need AV staff and we have 200 chairs, that's different. That's not going to happen. Right? Yeah. But so the nature of the rent. And so that we do quite a bit of them for memorials or, or some mm -hmm. kind of bir birthdays. Like birthdays. We do a lot of the private, the residents, private use mm -hmm. within like a month. Yeah. And I think it does address the issue of you being able to place the um, particular event to match a particular room not and resources, yeah. not necessarily what somebody might think they want. Are you open, would recreation be open to 
um, <clears throat> residents writing in and saying, okay, I have 20 people. Here are the rooms that I would prefer. Would you be open to that and looking at that? It's really, so a lot of times people will just say, I want this room. It's much better if they give us ranges, like just oh, say, okay. or absolutely, if it's that's the only space, we don't want it there. But a lot of times we'll get like the request with one room. And it's like, what other options? And we'll get one more room. And that one's booked. So the more information we get, the more. So yes, if yeah, you've got an email with it. three options, that mm -hmm. would be ideal. Be ideal. Okay. All right, are we ready to move on to number seven? Uh, when are you going to be? Uh, you not transfer. No, no, no. You say number seven. Seven, new seven. No, I'm talking about the, the new seven or the old six? The old seven. Seven. Okay. Seven. okay. Yeah. Um, that's what talks about the, that one talks about the 30 days set of information. Is that the paragraph? Yes. Okay. Um, this is so, this yeah, is, this, this is gotten. This it's is, actually because we've given you the 14 in advance, too. Pardon? So, there's something that was changed in here at the reservation roadshow. Okay. So, what we asked for the clubs was give us everything you know 30 days in advance. Okay. But you have until it's actually two weeks, 10 okay. working days, but we're saying two weeks. Okay. In that, advance. Okay. That, that, that they can give us the final without penalty. Okay. So, that, that's, that's where I was going with my question. So, you basically. A minimum of 30 days. Of, you say working days or calendar days? You say working days or calendar days? We're, 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 working make it cons we're going to make it consistent. Which is what? We just say 30 days. So it's basically, 30, so. it's going to be 30 calendar days then. Okay. okay. So basically, I I would give you my best guess of what I need for my event yes. and my room everything. And you confirm all of that. But you're saying that but 14 days before the actual day of the event, I can, make, I can request changes to be made. That's right. Okay. Okay. That's that's what I want to clarify. Okay. Um, so it changed from 10 to 14. Is that it's for, 14 it's not 14 working days? 14 just... calendar days. Or 14 working days. Because 14 working days is like half a month. <laughs> yeah, 14 exactly. calendar it's just 14 days, which is two weeks. Yeah, 14 calendar so like, days. Okay. So two weeks okay, so just for my edification, okay. How how do we doing. pick the minimum of 30 days? Yeah. How, how, how does that how did we come up with that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's I, actually well it's it's standard and for a couple of reasons so if it's 30 days in advance and we have overbooked certain resources that we have to be able to do stand type like tech or something we may be able to get some other resources and work with the group okay to try to do that the five days before which it is now or even two weeks it's just not enough time to do it okay so at that 30 days i get it with people don't know table counts some or the actual head count but you still know if you have a band book that you forgot to right. tell, tell us about or something like that mm -hmm. so it's a really good last check to make sure that you gave us every technical requirement mm -hmm. and i keep telling people give us what your goal is for this setup it's mm -hmm. easier to take away tables than put them up. And it's different if somebody said they're going to do something for 250 and you have 100 people show up. You can take away tables. Right. But to do the reverse of that mm -hmm. is, right. is more difficult to schedule if we're trying to be as efficient as we can with the workflow. So that's where we're asking for that. So it's adding just another step in your planning calendar at the 30 days out. Two weeks before, it shouldn't be that wild from what it's going to be like the one week before. Mm -hmm. So again, can we make small accommodations? But typically the deducts are much easier to make than adding a whole new setup. And certainly any technical, which we're asking for the applications, mm -hmm. any technical that close to the date, it's it, at some point it's only as available. Mm -hmm. So, so by giving so so give 30 days notice, the club is gonna be pretty certain that the resources will be there mm -hmm. to run their event. They may be able to, they, they would need to modify the number of people there, but they know that the event's going to run because you have the resources to run the event. They will know if we have the resources. Yeah, you will because know again, 30 days This out, is why yeah. that application, right. I know people say, oh, it's more paper. It's very standard okay. because we need to know. Right. And again, right. I can understand why people like, we didn't need paper. And it's like, well, because okay. people were working with you 20 years and they would see you come through the room and they would need they would every know. resource, right? And so we don't have the benefit of the history with everyone here, but we want to deliver that service. Right. So if we're in the intake, again, you know, so there's, um, I don't know if it was Phil or Rich that reached out to me about, oh, but if, if we, uh, we know we have six of the same event, 
and we usually give a stage plot, but we don't know like the size of the band. I said, just in your application, request like the biggest amount that you'd need for the biggest band. Taking it away is much easier, but at least we know, oh yes, on those six reservations, we know we're gonna have to have a pretty big setup. So it helps us plan the resource versus getting it, even like two weeks before a little too close, a month, we may have overbooked but we can actually plan and schedule resources really efficiently. Okay, so 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 this so so you try to put something in place that will benefit the club to make sure yeah. that the event's gonna run. Absolutely. I, I would actually clarify that so that it's understood that this is to make sure resources, staffing, equipment is available. Um, because the way it's read, it's a little yeah, it, it sounds like it, yeah. it sounds like it's just an arbitrary. It, it sounds like an arbitrary decision. Days for best but it guess. sounds like there's a a planning mm -hmm. function, mm -hmm. you know, involved, and, and it's, it's to try to make sure that we have sufficient resources and everything available to make sure that when that event runs, it's you know, mm -hmm. there will people there to make sure that, to make sure it runs. Okay, that that that's what I would just want to clarify in my mind. That that's great. It just was not an arbitrary decision. That there was some no. working logic behind so, this. Yes. Yeah. Good. I just wanted to make a comment that many people refer to the club. Well, this is Rossmore. Like this is different than the rest of the world. I spent many, many years as a conference planner. I spent many, many years planning many parties and events for my family. This is not unusual for organizations to ask for specifics on an amount of time prior. And anybody that runs a venue knows that 10% don't show up in general. Mm -hmm. And so this is not unusual to put these, yeah. these types of, um, some word, requirements. requirements in place. Thank you very much. I would, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that. This is not different. We're what we're first, trying to do is make standard. this, make it standardized yeah. and have it be more appropriate for as many organizations as possible. There will be mistakes, there will be problems, sure. but we need to have people better understand that this is these are the requirements. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Mm -hmm. Backing up to the beginning of number seven, <clears throat> or just seven in general, there's a lot of information that's listed there that is part of the new application. We should just put the language there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are easy enough. Somehow relate it to the application. We can do that. So, oh, okay. And I, I don't think I've ever seen, I don't know, I have seen policies with attachments. It would be applicable to attach an application. Does and that make it harder to refer change? It, refer them? to the, as stated in the application. Okay, so that you were just referring yeah, to I don't want you, you, I don't, you want to incorporate the because yeah, the application yeah, change it it requires the, the whole three, three, yeah. the readings. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. We had a question about the fees listed in number seven. So seven and fees in general are confusing. Um, and we have a whole fee section, so I don't know if we need to put this yeah, here. It's hard to this. put fees in text, you know, I know. A, yeah. a graphic a table, uh, because the way I'm reading this, I would is take it's ten, yeah. if it's greater than 10 days notice, there's no fee. Less than 10 days notice, is there a fee if they don't get back to you in that two weeks? But I think that's why it's clear. It's We may not it's, be able to review it to like put the clearer language in there. All right. So I would, make a note. do you want to refer it's, to the fee section as opposed to trying to state it verbally? Probably. I mean, there is a whole fee section yeah, here. Just, that means just shoot them there. to that. Yeah. Oh, so next. The part where you say a, a fee may be charged mm -hmm, for that a last, setup yeah. ch changes based on the fee schedule approved and periodically reviewed by the, the chair of board. I think you want to use something very similar to that throughout when you're talking about fees. Mm -hmm. There you go. Just keep that. In your spot here okay. Um, yeah, and then it refers back. Yeah. Good. I have a question on number eight. Okay. Decorations. Um, I've never seen a problem with decorations not being taken down, mm. but there might be. 
And if there are, and it costs us time and money to do that, maybe something there should say, a fee might maybe um, charge to the organization for cleanup. Or is that not a big enough issue? Well, it actually, we just had an issue with that this weekend. So I'm surprised I wasn't even there. Yeah, Sunny, you mentioned, mentioned it. it. Yeah, so, um, mention it. yeah, so I mean, and I think, and this goes to the question, do we need that level of detail in the policy? Or mm -hmm. does that just become in the, I think it goes in the guideline stock. Yeah. Okay. Too bad. Because there are so many things that are not in here that are in the guidelines. I looked at this and the guidelines and created that because it's very obvious what is or is not accepted. So I wonder if something like that should be put in the guidelines. Like do it this way instead of text. Yeah, just send it to me. Where I just a, think I think it's cleaner to read. Yeah, uh, it's cleaner. Can you, can you, can you, it's much yeah. cleaner. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Leanne, you have another one? Leanne, another one? Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I did it. We can pass it around. Oh, that's fine. We're sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just think about it. I'm a big proponent of it's more charts visual. and graphs and graphics. Yeah. You know. I know. I know. Uh, okay. Any she, other comments about eight? Seen that. Well. Okay, moving to number nine. Clubhouse just needs to be lowercase. Anybody have any comments about nine? Or 10. Okay, moving to number 11. Okay, on the, um, Thank you. on the clean copy, 11 roles is connected to the end of 10. So I would just say 11 should be kept separate as a step. I think it didn't fill it for no. If that's the December like reservation. The word, the word makes sense. So this, this needs to be a okay, good. <laughs> Oh, okay. so I think on the clean, it must have uh, it just it it just merged. Yeah, the right. space was deleted or something. All right, in the last sentence of number eleven, um, it mentions service clubs. What is that? I don't know what that is. That was in the original language. I didn't touch this. Let me That's see. The Let old, me read it. Old text. So. I don't know what service club is. Either. Yeah, what is a service? I think the service club in this one is intended to be like we have uh, the Rossmore Fund or Rotary or Lion. Those, is it because Rotary has regular lunch? They, they would meet twice a month for their luncheon or something? Um, I, I'm not sure at the time what the exception yeah. was. That could prove difficult because there are mm -hmm. other clubs that you may consider themselves thing. service clubs. So we. I don't the know club is a club. We're not de defining. Yeah. yeah. Should yeah. we take a find one to define them all? Yeah. 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 Should we? I think you maybe that. delete that yeah. sentence, right, to avoid confusion. Yeah. 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 Yes. They're all serving. I don't know the history is on this. Is this pace okay for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my I'm moving to <laughs> cancellations. Um, any comments on that? So we did change this for the clubs when we talked at the uh, meetings. Since there, since the clubs can give us their final setup the 15 days before, we push that so there's no penalty if they. Okay, so it's consistent. Yes, yeah, so we'll make that consistent with the. Uh, the, okay. the roadshow. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Moving on to um, did, there was a question by a resident about not really having much information or um, being informed about cancellation. Is that something that can be reviewed or? What do you mean? What do you? Um, somebody mentioned that they just got a letter that said. Oh, that canceled. their event was canceled. Um, yeah. But was it because of the? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. Probably because it was the, the Hawaii. Event center. Yeah. It could have been the event center. Yeah. The yeah, I'm just questioning stuff. if maybe you could give us some um, the procedure you as you see it for how recre recreation would proceed with a cancellation. Yeah. That, that, like we just had at the yeah event center. So I can, and, I can with the, and I can tell you. So maybe Marilyn wasn't the contact, but I do have documentation that we did with any of the clubs that was displaced. 
I believe it was from Illumina. So what we did was any of the clubs that were displaced, we reached out to them to try to relocate them. Oh, okay. So we talked so to them and we asked, we said, so, you know, so, so the initial email went out like this is happening. It's going to impact your rental. We're hoping that we can look at either alternate dates or we were looking at different spaces that had availability um, on their dates, right? If they wanted to keep the same date, but change the location. So we worked, I think that was the only organization that we couldn't relocate, but we were successful in relocating them all. The only things that we couldn't really relocate because there was just so many of them were the meetings in the free as is, but because there were no fees attached, we, you know, we could do some of them. I think some of the clubs that had them located in there, we tried to find space, but we, we did a pretty good job relocating them. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we know, as soon as we knew, we reached out and we said, it's going to happen sometime between September and October. We knew when the, as soon as the timeline was September, we reached out to all those clubs. Mm -hmm. When you say reach out, what does that mean? Email asking for response and then calling just to make sure that they received it and that we were working with the person that we have as the event contact so they knew exactly what was happening. All right, so the contact would be with who you have registered as an authorized. Yeah, so in the future, and I think even by the application, so understand right now we don't even have applications, right? Yes. So we don't know who owns a reservation. Right. And so this is gonna be, it should be really helpful for communication. So if something bizarre happens, um, my gosh, is, a, is it Heather Farms? They had some like major pipeline burst, they right? Did. And they had to call all these brides, right? <laughs> Cancel weddings, but it was oh, nice, wow. right? Because on the application, you know exactly who to call. And so it'll help us. So even if like officers change, hopefully the person that owned that particular event, that historic event, that'll be consistent. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we will have now a more current email list. Mm -hmm. And on these things, which tend to be more of a focused group, like super specific, and we can reach out to them and make sure that they're, we have good communication as soon as we know that it's getting impacted. I think that's great because right now on the contract, the person's name is the person who made the reservations the previous year. Yeah. And often that person is no longer an officer. You know, so you have this contact name. They're not an officer. Right. Next year. They get contacted. Maybe they're not even in the club anymore. Right. You know, it's very. Yes. Odd. And part of that is like we have a very, um, and, and I think I, I had mentioned for those that were at the roadshow asking about online capabilities. You know, we have to go through the NetSuite implementation, and then we'll be able to implement a new registration management software. Right now, there's like hiccups and glitches in the one we yes. have, which is also why we need that other application, right. which hopefully will all be electronic with the new uh, process. And the, the application is excellent. It's really a very good application. Cool. Um, <clears throat> okay. We're at fees. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about creating something more... Um, quick and dirty, easy, legible chart about fees. So, um, but the issue with fees is we don't want to put fees no, in no. here. Right? No, 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 no. Because okay. then every time we change it. But something no. similar about this is what a what this is what clubs would be. Right. Okay. But I'm pretty adamant that the fees should be posted online. They, they actually are. I know they are now, yeah. but some of the fees you're talking about are not included online. They will be later. Well, some of the fees like, like the, the penalty fees. Yeah, the penalty fees, as far as I know, are not listed on Rossmore.com. Well, yeah. we don't have any penalty. We don't have, there is exactly yeah. a That's true. Deposit. We don't have them until this. We don't have them. Rossmore There's a cleaning deposit. Right. That is listed. Okay. Right. So that's, that's the only fee. That's the only charges. I have no penalty idea what fee. So, right. so that's the only fee. I don't want to the ball on a roof. It's ball. Carpet gets for No. So, so once the fees schedule is established, it'll be online. And maybe another global change throughout these policies is to say reflected in the fee schedule found on Rossmore.com or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Jeff said, refer them to the source. Yeah. The yeah. Information. Well, not only that, but uh, you make the res at least I did. I make the reservation. I was given a copy of all the fees. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, at, time, at when I made my reservation for my room, they gave me they gave me all the fee schedules. I had all that. 
I think that's fine, but sometimes things are missed. So I think putting in a yeah. policy oh, no, where no, the fees can be found. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just saying that that, that, that would be great. Uh, I'm just saying that you know it, it's it, uh, it, it, at, at, a, at a, if they don't see it on the website, they get a copy of it. So. Oh, but the way it says it on here too, you should change where they're available. Yeah. Can I know it has to go to probably finance about raising the fees for private events, right? Is that where that process oh, would we're going to be talking about? We're going to talk, right. talk about here, okay? Right. Yeah. August. Okay. This is August, isn't it? We are in August, <laughs> so maybe September. Okay, but we're not in finance. Well, but we're not. <laughs> oh, it's on that one for finance. Okay, great. All right, I'm looking at number two under fees: private rentals that require GRF staff time. Change two to four. Uh, staff time for set up use of equipment. There's just a lot of extra words in there. So. I would have it read staff time for setup, use of equipment, and or operation of audio video. That's cleaner. Say that again. Say that again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Both of us were like swimming in words. And Dan, is this something you have in writing? I bet you have notes. So it, stuff that is grammatical and clarifying language if if any of you have that if you can just, just email it okay. where it's substantive and changing the meaning of yeah. the, i wasn't sure how to that, do that yeah, that one, especially be because it's a draft that we're bringing back to you uh, oh, so we'll see it again. So you're going to see this okay. again okay but that way we capture the intent a little so bit we can just yeah and you don't want you, us editing it i don't think you want to edit Pleasure. do group editing in a, a meeting it gets a little too long Okay. Uh, can I pick up on something Jeff said for clarification? And you tell me if I'm saying it wrong, okay? That people seem to get upset because they think these policies are being accepted automatically because staff and administration says we should. That isn't how the process works. As you can see, and I'm really sorry when people leave the meeting before the discussion, um, that we review it and then review it again and then we possibly review it again before it even gets to the board for the first time. So as they say, nothing is written in stone and these changes are not being implemented immediately. Is that true? There has been no rush to change these whatsoever. Um, Anne and her team have gone through extensive Number one, fact finding. Number two, outreach. Then drafting, presenting, outreach to the community, significant number of times, <clears throat> individual meetings. And the, the important thing is the intent of all of these changes is to make the process better for everyone. And we keep running across that. So you might go, boy, to cancel 14 days in advance can be really burdensome or 30 days in advance can be really burdensome. And then you're gonna charge us a fee. Well, what that does is it frees up the resources for other people to be able to maybe make that reservation. It makes the process better for others. It, yes, there might be a, uh, a requirement that you notify us instead of just leaving a room. Or if we set up a room and nobody shows up, boy, that's a waste of resources that somebody else could have used. So the intent behind every single one of these things that we're doing is not for GRF's benefit, is for the benefit of the process and all of the users. Okay, my soapbox stuff. No, I agree. I, I totally think agree. that's right. I see the rationale. Um, Where are we? Yeah, number three under fees. If I can just... So the rest of the stuff is okay. You want to work. So on the that. rest of the stuff is really just do start a conversation because it's 
so I will say that number three, first of all, I don't think it's good to specify that. I think what's happening with the clubs as we're working through the fees and we're trying to come up with, mm -hmm. was it Phil? Phil just left, but even Phil was talking about, no, we don't wanna be charging the private resident rate when these clubs have these things that are open up. We're trying to come up with different solutions because we don't wanna break the backs of the clubs, right? right? Mm -hmm. Of the people that are coming in. Mm -hmm. So we've really listened to try to figure out, okay, so where should we go as we try to propose fees, which isn't gonna be reviewed through here. So I don't know how we make this, oh, Minnie yeah. comes back. So I don't know how we make the language <laughs> neutral enough to accommodate the fees that the board may or may not set. Because right, right. they may not, they may choose not to do anything, right? But I don't know, so that's where this is getting a little confusing yeah. for me, and I don't know that we even need to specify it, but more work on. Yeah, I, I think question. this is one where we need some some greater policy guidance in terms of non-resident involvement and impacts, uh, whether it is in the philosophy of non-residents add to the uh, the enrichment of lives here and it's part of what you pay for already. And, and yes, there's an impact, but it's absorbed and, and we should recognize that or the philosophy of non-residents have an impact that a club or group is benefiting from and the greater members that are paying the, the coupon shouldn't be burdened by. And so you wanna try and capture some of that somehow. So it's kind of just a, a real policy question for the policy committee on what, what is the philosophy of non-residents in, in general? And then that will give us more guidance on coming back to you with ways to capture that or capture it in, in other ways. And so this language becomes a little bit difficult. Yes. Because of what and we're trying to do with the difficult. fees to really balance them, because mm -hmm. we want to make we want to make sure that we're trying to honor the enrichment that's brought in by the the guests of any committee members. Let's talk about that. I've been thinking about this a lot, and like, oh, can I speak? I'm going to speak. <laughs> you can um, speak. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't follow protocol. Um, I've been thinking about a lot and have been approached by pretty much everyone everywhere I go, as everyone else has. And I do believe there should be some recognition of the amount of non-residents that come in to enjoy Rossmore facilities. Like I said to somebody in the midst of a conversation is, we're buying their toilet paper. It's coming out of my coupon. I mean, that's kind of a silly. No, but, but they're driving. They're and I love non-residents. I mean, I have relatives that could, you know. Um, but and I belong to organizations that, especially fundraising organizations, that can increase our fundraising because there are non-residents that attend our events. But I still think there should be some measure of responsibility on the clubs that are benefiting from non-residents, where those of us who don't belong to those clubs are paying for their toilet paper. Yeah. So are you, are you, talking, <laughs> are you speaking about over 20% of a club? Or? I don't know. I, I'm not sure how you would want to do that, or as I keep saying, how you would monitor it in, in reality. Um, so that all has to be discussed. But I think there should be some measure of responsibility from for the clubs to bring in non-residents. Non okay, and any other comments to that? Okay. Okay. When you say a non-resident, uh, as we talk about the policy, I see two definitions of non-resident. Uh, non-resident club members, uh, they join a civic club. Good question. So they are a non-resident club. <laughs> so that, to me, that's one kind of non-resident. Mm -hmm. And these are people that would be coming in to a uh, regular club. Yeah, regular club meetings. So, so, so they're getting the uh, uh, the benefit of the club membership, but at the same time, they're using our facilities as part of that club. 
Okay. And we are all paying as through our coupon, we're all paying to upkeep those facilities. So one question is that if all the resident club members are paying something to upkeep those facilities, why aren't the non-resident club members also contributing to the cost of those upkeep? So that's one definition. The other non-residents I see are like my family, my kids, my relatives, my friends who come in once every six months or so to play golf with me or to go to whatever. Some dinner. Yeah, you know, some dinner or go to, we go to game, whatever. To me, that's a little different. That's like, a, uh, sure. you know what I mean? And, that's a and, and, and every resident has that right to do that. So, so I see non-resident as, as two different classes. You know, the occasional family, friend, non-resident comes in and I see one who's a club member who, who right now are not contributing to upkeep and costs of the facilities, but us residents who are the club members are paying for that cost. So should they equally share that cost? I add a third to that. And mm. that would be a non-resident, non-club member, mm. club participant. Yeah, that's in my list too. All right. You're right. That, that, so right. you right. have well, the twenty percent threshold, well, and then you have non-residents that come and participate that's right. in the club. That's right. Yeah, it might not be on a roster. You're right. Agreed. I think it's mostly events. But so, but it comes. But as we're kind of looking at it and trying to figure this out, there's. There are kind of two percentage buckets of questions. The first one is, right now we have clubs that exceed 20%, and some of them as many 85% non-resident right now. We do. We do? On the roster. So what is so what is the intention of that? Just, on, just like to say, I'm going to become a club. I'm going to maintain club status, which means you maintain the privilege <laughs> to look this way as the club. And then you have some clubs that maintain that, but their activity is maybe 50, 60 by the time they have it. And it's a club sponsored activity. With the people coming through, it's about 50 or 60. It's like, that's kind of like, I, I see that like a different category of use, but you have a lot of clubs, a lot of clubs that do that, right? Where they open up so their members can bring in guests. And so what's the draw of the guest coming in is a club activity versus they're coming to visit right. a member, right? So you're saying 50% of that activity is non-residents. Yeah. So so the question kind of is, and you left the room, I was talking about this. We don't think that is necessarily a private event, but is there a middle? So do we need two different definitions? And one of them is, what is a club? What's a club? And it becomes one of those things about managing, going back to Maxine's question. If we're asking for clubs with rosters of 20%, but it regularly exceeds it, like we need to figure out that administrative check. Like what is the purpose of these club discounted rate activities? So we need to define that, but, other, but for the fee, purpose of fees, I think there are plenty of clubs that are 100 to 90, they're most of them like 100 to 95% residents. Mm -hmm. And they need rooms for, you know, board meetings, whatever. That's 20%. That's an easy pass on. Mm -hmm. That is that super discounted club rate. As soon as they seem to do this activity, mm -hmm. maybe it doesn't not make them a club anymore, but is it kind of this rate where, as Phil was saying, what we've been trying to play with, you're trying to, the fee is based on like the impact. So you look at the mm -hmm. occupancy where the rooms typically place and maybe the fee's gonna be ended up end up on the occupancy. So we're playing, we're playing with these models. So it's not such a jump as going from what they've been paying as a club to now paying a non-resident. But I think there are like three, I think what you're gonna see are three different fees. And again, we're not increasing fees, so it's establishing a new fee and kind of simplifying the club fees a bit. Um, that might address that. So I think we we did that, but we don't know at what percentage, like they hosted, like you know what constitutes the club or not. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, in the first and place, I would need to work through that. Yeah, I need. It's to a lot, right? Too. And so I could give real examples without with taking you know the names taking the names away because again, it's it, it hasn't been managed. So clubs are not situated like this because they were doing anything inherently right, right, nefarious or anything. It's just it wasn't. Nobody thought about how popular Rossmore was going to be. <laughs> For us I, faces. I think um, the examples would be beneficial because I think as residents, we need to evaluate the wear and tear yeah. of extra 
you know, we're paying for the maintenance of Rossmore properties. Mm -hmm. How much do we want to pay out of our coupon, really, to support guests, essentially? And by seeing examples, I think we'll be able to weigh that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's a one-off every so often, not a big deal. But if there's a consistent, repetitive attendance of non-members, we're paying for that wear and tear. It's like chair upholstery, right. cleaning oh, services. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it was a metaphor, but well, yes, well, that's our <laughs> So I think we'll wear and tear on chairs and tables, everything. Well, well yeah. Um, not so to mention staff required. Staff and, well, but, but not only that, right? But um, with those large meetings, if, if you didn't allow all those non non resident members in here, would that open up those rooms for other clubs who, who, who may need those facilities? So you have to exactly. consider the impact on that, right? Again, it yeah. impacting the availability of you know facilities. Yeah, but I also we are part of a community, and I would hate to see any rules that say non-residents couldn't participate. Oh, no, 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 I think we all are We're not saying that. No, 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 and, and even like the idea of if you're a non, <laughs> yeah, I know. If you're a non-resident member, we're not gonna we're not gonna say you pay a fee, you pay a fee. That we could never manage. You can't figure it out. You can't manage it. And that's, it just seems like, but based on use, is there something that happens with the fees? That maybe you would check. It can be distributed through like ticket. I mean, if you, know, if you never charge a ticket price, yeah. maybe now you do yeah. to help cover that difference. Yeah. So I don't think anybody wants to make want a to silo. Yeah. Right. right. No. Good. Just want to make sure that that was said loudly. Absolutely. So hopefully residents are watching the video of this and they can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so just to summarize it, it sounds like there is policy wise interest in somehow capturing uh, the cost impact of yeah. beyond 20% or, or oh, non-resident participation. I think we just need to see. This. We don't yeah. even know yeah. about the 20% because okay. we were Well, really yeah. I'm a little yeah. shocked that we can have clubs with over 20%. I always thought it was a 20%. That's 304.1. So well, it, is a rule. Yeah. it is a rule. Yeah. It is a rule. Wow. It wasn't in Yeah, we're bringing it back into compliance, yeah. but there's no yeah. change in that language. So okay. what, what that gives us is some direction then to come back to you with some examples and some options to consider. Yeah. And, I, and I think the other important part of this is that it's something that we can agree is manageable. Yes, yeah. It's not some something that's over the top. Okay, so let's go back to, we won't dwell on fees, but I just want to make a point here. Number five under fees, while you're editing that section, um, oh. you also define ticketed event or fundraiser. Mm -hmm. okay. For instance, well, there are clubs that have dinner fundraisers but how do you know who's attending? And why would you, I mean, how would you charge a different fee for the attendees to that event? Mm -hmm. That's the same. I actually don't think we're gonna, again, when we did this, which was how long have we been? We've been working on this a lot. So this kind of came in before we were really trying to put things together, started the, Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it's not going to, it won't look like that. No, I'm sorry. Right. So it's yeah. number five, the one about the reservation mm -hmm. event. Ticketed. Ticket Don't just, worry about that. No, no, but that was just talking about charging a different room rate. Right. Whether it's, it's a, a private, private rental rate. rate. Versus a, yeah. So here's, so here's, well, sometimes it's hard to, we're going to come up with specific examples. I think it's going to be better to have the questions about when we have really clear categories. Yeah, that would of, really help. Well, let me, uh, let me, uses in question. Okay, okay, I don't want to five. say questionable use because that sounds, again, it sounds like it's not, people are intentionally doing something. Yeah. They're just uses that are well, outside well, of we'll, we'll, we'll wait for that. Well, let, 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 let me just know. So, so you got this musical group, they're putting on a show, mm -hmm. they're selling tickets to outside people and inside people. Correct. Without. Yeah. But, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's what that category. Um, but as far as number six, um, it doesn't have any reference to fees. So I wondered if number six should be listed under reservations. 
Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, they took, yeah, they took the fee plan. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because we're trying to keep all that language generic. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's similar for number seven. They talk about federal holidays. Doesn't have anything to do with fees. Change the name of that. We'll get some edits to jewelry on number eight. Okay, number nine. If you maybe you can work on this too. Um, it's the first mention of being built. Um, yeah, we don't have that. We haven't we really have talked about that right now. Yeah, All right. Okay. So, what would you do in this case? Would you take it out of the security deposit or? Yes, what we say in the um, whole application on the application and guidelines, which is why a lot of this stuff is kind of interesting because it doesn't have everything that's in there, but yeah. yeah. But what we say in the um, application guidelines, whether you're arrest, whether it's a private reservation, well, if it's a private reservation, you have to pay that deposit at the beginning and then you right. get it refunded. Right. And so we can bill against that and then give you the remainder. For clubs, what we say is the clubs, they don't have that cash flow. So we don't ask for those security deposits in the advance for every yeah. reservation. But if there is an issue, we can bill up to that amount after the event. Right. And then they have to be in good standing by just you know paying the fees. So we need to make the language consistent in a lot of these yeah. with the application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. The number uh, No, above. Uh, okay, the heading payment of reservation fees, the paragraph above that about no yeah. shows. Um, again, this doesn't discuss fees. Um, should there be a section under cancellation or no shows? Place it somewhere else. I don't think fees is the appropriate place. Yeah. For that. All right, <clears throat> moving on to payment of reservation fees. Okay, my question was we don't talk about, okay, I don't know if this is still true, but this year it seemed like you were Recreation was following the understanding that history reservations should be paid all in advance, all in advance. Is that still true? Like if a club comes in, like, okay, August 30th, club comes in and they want to reserve 10 rooms for next year, do they have to pay all of that? No, they're, the, they're number two. So for private rentals, it's the payment in full for clubs and geographic organizations. It's the month before. It's the 15th of the okay. month before the reservation. For right. so each month. event. Yeah. Yeah, it's just private. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and just curious, will there be options to pay just not in policy, but pay by credit card? Is <laughs> check or is it all still check? I think you can do credit card too. Yeah, yeah you, can you can do credit, credit card. card right now. I think like setting up with Zelle and things like that will be something that we'll explore when we get our new. Maybe we say silent. We certainly can't do that with our current finances. Heavily checked. Um, I know, right? It is. Any questions on that section? All right, moving on to occupancy. Um, I just have a thing ahead of the door there. Uh, clean up. Um, I have a question about that. Okay. Uh, in other sections of the policy, it's suggested that it says unless prior arrangement is made by somebody, maybe it should be in here as well because they're. But it might be no about um, well yeah clean up or whatever it, there might be an occasion that somebody needs to be there a little bit longer. 
I can't think of one, but it well, just we, to state that that unless specifically approved by GRF administration, we kind of I mean it's addressed ad nauseum in the okay. in application and guidelines. Okay, as well as the um, they talk about like if you're here like beyond the scheduled time. So like you need to have well, approval for it's it. It's addressed somewhere else. But Excellent. part of it is like, and I get, I get there are like really true things, but there are other, there are other incidents where people just kind of keep staying, thinking they can buy their way out of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we'll just pay for the time afterwards. Yeah, okay. And it puts the team behind with closing down. Well, it puts a big stressor on the, on the staff people that have to say, hey, get out yeah. of here. And it does say we'll be billed accordingly. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so it is covered. Right? Um, Okay, so you're going to make revisions and then this is going to come back to us, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah, I think we're going to stop here because we have to get out of here at three. Oh. Um, well, time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. When you're having fun. But even on the other policies, though, again, if you have okay, feedback have that is, you know, like just like edit, like editing. Like give edits, like just type give them to bring you. it back to you. Yeah, we'll right. incorporate that. All right. I think residents will now see that this is not going to be a quick process. No. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's know when we do listen. I like that. Okay. okay. Um, there is no new business. Oh, oh I forgot. We are next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Our next meeting will be September 9th here at 1.30. And I will adjourn the meeting at 2.50. Thank you.